now I would like you to introduce you to our speaker, Claudette Nita, a little bit about her. Since early childhood, Claudette knew she was going to work with animals. Her love and compassion for them led her to volunteering at humane societies and vet clinics, as well as taking in strays and helping injured wildlife. Claudette attended St. Clair College in Windsor, Ontario, and became an RVT, registered veterinary technician, in 1998. She worked at animal hospitals in Toronto for seven years, and for the past decade has been a technician at the neurology department of the veterinary emergency clinic. She is also licensed in canine massage and is a certified dog and cat trainer through Animal Behavior College. Welcome, Claudette. We're excited to find out how to teach our cats new behaviors. And I'm going to pass things over to you. Okay, hopefully everyone can hear me. Uh, thank you, Heather, for the introduction. And um, hi, everyone. So one of the reasons why I started this business was because nobody was doing this. And there were misconceptions that cats can't be trained. I've been helping clients with their cats for over seven years now. And this is where my true passion lies. I currently have two cats um, named, if I can move that. Oh, they're there. Um, so I have two cats named Chewy, which is the gray and white one, and Beanie is the tabby cat. Um, I just love and adore them, and they're on their pizza boxes. I also have a dog named Kiba. She's the Kishund, or, or you can pronounce it Kishund. And of course, she likes to sometimes walk around with the cat toys. Most people I talk to are shocked that you can train cats. So this is a video of the uh, Savitsky cats. Um, they were on America's Got Talent. You may have seen this already, but it's always fun to watch again if you haven't. And if you haven't seen it, um, I really think you're gonna enjoy it. Uh, this video, video shows Simon Cowell being very doubtful in the beginning, but then he quickly changes his mind at the end. So I'm gonna show you a short clip. Um, if I can, I may have to show you the whole clip because I'm not sure if I can edit this. Um, but it's just to get you pumped for the talk and the training. So let's give it a try here. My name is Marina and this is my mom, Svetlana. And what do you do? Yep, they do what they want, those cats. Do you have a cat? I used to have a cat.
I cannot feel like it. Okay, I think I'm back. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, now, I do not do this type of training, but I will go through some things with you later on basic commands and methods on how you can teach your cat. So let's start with basic training. So the difference between cats and dogs are cats have shorter training sessions at times and need to have more patience, um, where, where dogs have longer training sessions. Cats have longer memories than dogs, um, where dogs have shorter memories than cats. Um, cats are better to be trained one time at a, uh, at a time, um, but dogs, I feel like you can do more of a group training. And dogs are easier to train because they are always eager to please the owner. So similarities, um, what makes dogs and cats trainable? Um, if they are food motivated, they can be taught any trick, like sit, stay, shake a paw, etc. Again, this depends on the breed and temperament of both species. So during training, um, if she or he gets up or walks away to do something else, it means they have lost patience or has become bored. So you want to retrace to where they were responding correctly. So an example is, if you were teaching a different command or tricks for five minutes and the cat got up and walked away every time, then for the next training sessions, you may only want to work for four minutes. So you always want to keep it fun so they want to keep on learning and uh, for them to enjoy it. So the next slide is clicker training. I'm not sure if some of you know clicker training or not. Uh, clicker training is a reward-based system that you can use to train your cat to repeat behaviors that you want. So instead of reprimanding your cat if he or she is doing something wrong, you can use positive reinforcement when they engage in the right behavior that you want. When the cat has performed the behavior you want, then you're gonna click and then give the treat right away. Once they hear the clicker, they will begin to associate it as a positive, connecting the sound with the, getting the treat. Um, the good thing about clicker is that you can mark the behavior from across the room. So in order for clicker training to work, um, the cat must be food motivated or treat motivated. So how to get your cat to sit. You want, so first you'll want to be at his or her level. So for an example, um, if you're teaching them, you either want to be on the floor with them or they can be sitting on um, a table and you can be sitting on a stool, um, but just get to their level. So the steps for this is you want to first lure them into the position, then you want to do hand gestures, and then verbal comes last. So with the lure, and I'm going to show you two videos um, after this, um, what not to do and what you should do. So with luring, you'll grab a piece of treat, and you'll bring it to their nose or just below their nose, and you'll bring it up along their nose, between their eyes, and up their head. So as you're doing that, their haunches or their hind end will actually sit down. Now this is a really, really quick motion, so it's gonna be very, very fast, and you're gonna see this in a video when I'm doing this with the kitten. Once they've mastered the lure, so when you bring the treats out, and they sit automatically, you wanna quickly bring into a hand gesture, and your hand gesture can be any hand gesture, okay? Um, but you need to be consistent with that. So once they're about to sit down, you're gonna bring that hand gesture, and again, at the hand gesture point, you're going to be sitting at their level two, okay? So once they, you've mastered the hand gesture and the lure, then you can start to stand up, and they can be on, on the ground level. 
Um, so then you can start to do the hand gesture from standing or a little bit further away from them. And then you can just add the verbal sit. So um, the first video um, is, um, I'm working with the kitten and you'll see the first video, the kitten swatting my hand for a treat. Um, it's because my hand is too far away and then my hand is too high up. Um, this is a little bit exaggerated, uh, but I just wanted you guys to get the idea what was happening here. Okay. Okay. And the next one, I think I just have to click on that. Um, is the correct way to do the learn again now it's very a fast it's a very fast motion so this is all done very quickly so this kid is, is the first time sitting um, after the second time approaching us so uh, she is very very smart and very adorable okay um, so Sitting should be, um, I'm just gonna go to the next slide here. Okay, so sitting should be one command that you teach your cat if you're gonna teach anything, okay? It's a stationary position that, and will teach the cat to have patience. So an example, if you're making um, their dinner and you have a cat climbing all over you or excessive meowing or climbing the cupboards, the sit will teach them patience, being calm, and having manners. So this is the next video of my cat, um, Chewy. Um, he is begging for, I'm making dinner and he's begging for food. Um, I don't know if you can hear him meowing, but he is climbing the cupboards. And I just wanted to show you an example. Oops, just lost my cursor there. Let me just do this, there we go. Okay. Sit. Good boy. Okay. So he sat, then I gave him the food. Um, so I'm just giving, I'm showing him manners and he has to sit before he gets his food. Okay. Okay, so, um, so hopefully you can practice the sit command with your cats or cats. And if you want to train your cat on other commands or tricks, just follow the three steps of lure, gestures, and verbal. Um, I hope you learned uh, something and will be have fun, fun training. And let me know if you have any questions on the training um, uh, presentation. So the next one is common cat behaviors. So we're gonna start with uh, house soiling. Um, you'll see a diagram here of two cats. Um, so one is an inappropriate urination and the other one is spraying. So the spraying, the cat will lift their tail and urinate against any object. You may even see the tail quiver. And inappropriate urination um, is where the cat will just squat and then leave a puddle on the object it's uh, uh, peeing on. Reasons why cats um, urinate in the household um, could be due from medical issues, outdoor cat sightings, um, cats in the household um, that is being bullied by another animal, litter box aversion, and changes um, in or routine in the household. So I'm going to go through um, all of them right now and, um, and then I'll just go over the causes and how we can prevent things. So signs to look for, um, um, as you can see in this image, um, are vocalization in the litter box, smaller droplets of urine, straining and no urine produced, blood present in the urine. Um, if you do see any of these signs, please go to the nearest emergency clinic or contact your veterinarian right away. It could be an emergency. So causes that, um, that will cause this is uh, urinary tract infection, cystitis, which is an inflammation of the bladder, uh, kidney stones or bladder stones. Uh, these can be moderate to severe, um, blockage of the urethra, uh, carrying urine from the kidney to the bladder 
or the urethra that carries urine from the bladder to the outside of the body. Other causes to why your cat will be peeing outside the litter box. Um, it could be hyperthyroid, diabetes, or renal issues. Um, you may see your cat drinking more um, and urinating more. Age can, uh, can affect cognitive dys dysfunction, such as declining brain function, dementia to, do, to old age. Um, it can also be neurological issues, uh, muscle or joint um, issues, such as arthritis. So look at these adorable faces. Who wouldn't want them in their yard? Um, well, I definitely wouldn't mind them in my yard, but I don't think your cat would. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why your cat may be spraying around the house, territorial stress, which can cause anxiety. Uh, the perimeter of where your cat would be spraying um, is usually around a window door that leads outside or exterior walls in the house. Tips on how to investigate who's coming in your yard. You can either set up a camera outside um, of your house to figure out who's coming in um, and, and where they're entering from. If there's any op openings around the fence area, then you should block them off. You can also use a black light outside at night to see if there's any spraying going on. And if there is, you can clean up the area with um, water. Um, cats do have great noses and they can smell a mile away. So here are a few examples. Um, so if your cat is coming to the yard and using it as a bathroom, then you can place chicken wire on top of the soil to prevent it from reoccurring. There's also products that you can use called Scarecrow, which is a water repellent, or Cat Stock, which is an ultrasonic repellent in your yard. Um, you can also look into getting specially made fences for, your, for along the fence line to keep um, outdoor cats um, from coming into your yard, um, or it can be also be used if you want to just keep your cats inside your yard too. You can also give your cats, um, you can also um, block the lower half of the windows with cardboard or paper, or you can just shut your blinds at night so the cats can't look outside during um, um, dusk and overnight. To help a cat feel less um, anxious, you can use uh, uh, such as uh, scratching posts, feel away, diffusers or spray, um, bedding, vertical space. Um, they're all great to make the cat feel a little bit less anxious and for them not to feel like they have to defend their property. So the next one is bowling. Um, this is another reason why your cat may be peeing outside the litter box. Um, urinating on pot, uh, personal belongings such as backpacks or purses, clothing, shower mats or shoes. Uh, middle of the room, such as under a dining room table or chair. Vertical spaces on top of dressers, tables, stoves, or fridges. And cat furniture, um, like scratching posts, cat trees, or cat beds. So things we can do to prevent bullying. Okay. Um, if it's really bad between animals, you may consider doing a reintroduction. Um, also, you can place um, litter boxes in different locations in case one cat is blocking the pathway of the victim cats. You can do positive-based training between the animals through clicker training, food, motivation, and play sessions. This may have to be done from a distance. If this is due from a child or an adult, um, you should speak to them about how to handle the cats in a positive way, and you may have to do supervised visits with them in the beginning. You should also teach your children to be calm and not to touch the cat unless you get their, um, their, your approval, basically. So how to, um, a lot of these cats have anxiety and stress. So I find that doing individual play sessions with the victim in areas where they have been bullied will increase their confidence. You can also try using natural remedies to reduce stress, such as feel products or pet rescue remedy. 
And enrichment is really important. Um, again, include vertical space, some mental stimulation. You can get YouTube videos made for cats or bird feeders outside your home for them to watch. Uh, even food puzzlers or mazes that you can try. So number four on the list was the litter box aversion. So signs of when my cat does not like the litter. Getting in and out as fast as they can, standing on the edge of the box, not digging up the litter before and after, scratching the floor or the wall beside the litter box, urinating or defecating beside the litter box or a few feet, and sink and bath tubs are uh, another clue too. So you'll have to put your thinking caps on and go through a checklist, which I'm about to um, show you. Okay, so the first one is, are you using scented litter? Cats can smell 14 times stronger than you can. They're very sensitive to strong odors, which um, is why I don't really recommend using scented litter. How many cats do you have? Depends on how many boxes you have. So a rule of thumb is two boxes per cat. Some cats like to poop in one and urinate in the other. Where is your box kept? The boxer should be located in an area where the cat prefers it to be and not you. So an example, um, if you're putting it in the litter box, if you're putting the litter box in the furnace room where it's loud and dark, or a bathroom in high traffic area um, where lots of people are using it, there's a good chance your cat is not gonna use that litter box. Are you using a liner? Um, if so, stop because, because cats do not like the feel of it. How much litter are you using? Um, cats, rule of thumb, usually cats like to one to two inches on the litter box. So if you were using three inches or four inches, maybe just go down to one or two and try that. How often do you clean it? Uh, most cats are finicky when it comes to litter boxes, especially when it's not clean. I always ask the client, would you want to use a toilet that's not clean and overflowing? I don't think so. <laughs> um, a litter box should be um, scooped out at least one to two times per day. What size is your box? Um, is it open or is it covered? This sh so the size um, should be at least the cat, um, the cat size and a half. So they should be able to stand in it and be able to turn around. And if you have a covered litter box, try uncovering it and see if that's the issue. Uh, what type of litter are you using? Most cats like medium grain texture. Uh, so just basically just keep it simple. So the last one is changes and routine. So cats can urine outside the box because of certain changes or routines. Um, so such as a new relationship, a new animal coming to the household, a newborn baby, spending more or less time in the house. Okay, um, A lot of us are now spending more time in the house because of COVID. And so all the animals are a little mixed up with what's going on. And this can cause stress and anxiety. So things that we can do um, to help. So for the new relationship, have the new person um, that just moved in, um, have the new person do a play session and be the key feeder for that cat um, so they can build a positive relationship um, with them. If you're bringing a new animal into the house, um, follow an introduction protocol and introduce them very slowly, letting them decide at their own pace. Um, a lot of owners rush into this process and then they have negative consequences to this. If it's a newborn baby, um, if you're expecting a baby, I want you to prepare prior to the baby coming home by doing desensitizing exercises with a recording of the baby of a baby crying. You can also bring home the smells of products you'll be using on the new baby and um, set up your nursery slowly um, with your cat exploring it to, and making it a very positive um, situation. So you can use treats, you can have a play session in there, um, just basically just making this whole experience um, really good for your cat. 
uh, spending more or less time in the house. Um, you know, just try to keep the same routines as if you were going to work. So, you know, you spent some time in the morning um, and you went to work, you would not spend any time then. And then when you come home from work, you can, you know, you know, cuddle them, have a play session and so forth. Um, so just keep that schedule, even if you're working at home, um, just so it's not very confusing for them. I just want to note again, if there are any urinary issues or if you find your cat urinating outside the box, um, definitely go through my checklist. But I do always recommend you visiting a veterinarian first, just in case it's a medical issue. So scratching furniture. So your, your cat is scratching the corner of the couch, dining room table legs, or the carpet. What do you do? Um, and you are at your wit's end, because I, I, I can totally understand that. But before I go into that, I want to say that this is a cat's natural behavior. It's a necessity. So scratching gives the cat security and ownership, okay? So why do cats scratch? They scratch because they're marking their territory, mixing their scents uh, with yours. It helps them distress, um, good for exercise and stretching their body. And it also helps shed loose um, nail sheaths. So what do both have in common? So reasons to why they choose this is um, all three are sturdy. Um, it has your scent on it. Uh, it's readily handy when they walk into the room. And it's also about um, texture. How we stop this. So you're gonna, when you're using a deterrent, you always have to use an alternative. So a deterrent, depending on the material of the couch, you can try sticky side tape. Um, you're gonna place this in an area of where your cat is scratching. If you can't use the sticky side tape, then you can drape the towel or blanket over these areas. An alternative for, with the deterrent um, is you would place the scratching posts so if the cat is scratching upwards on the couch, on the side of the couch, then you want to bring a vertical scratching post near that area where the cat is scratching. Uh, to make the scratching post sturdy, place the base under the couch and the post directly up against the couch. Okay. So I'm just going to go in just a little bit of decline because some people um, just say that decline is okay, um, but I say no to decline. It's very unnecessary. So a little history if you don't know what decline is. Um, decline is removing the entire nail of the bone from the cat. So if you're comparing it to a human, it would look like taking away the first bone of your fingers or toes. Cats walk on their toes for balance. So can you imagine if your toes were cut off, like how would you balance? Um, cats need their claws also for defense. Uh, there may be, um, there have been many cases of cats that do not recover well from decline. Um, they show chronic pain and cats can become more aggressive through biting. If you previously decalled your cat because um, you didn't have the facts or the truth about it, I hope you or someone you know will consider this in the future. A lot of veterinarians right now will no longer do this procedure um, because they do feel it's unnecessary and humane. So how do you get my cat to use a post? Uh, well, there's, there's a few things that you can try. Uh, there's toys, uh, catnip, you can scratch yourself and make it look fun and entice them to come over to the scratching post. You can place your, your scents on the post by rubbing your scents on it, uh, using um, you know, a t-shirt that you've worn all day and then just rubbing it on the post. Rewarding, so when you do see them scratching the post, you wanna praise them. I do like this comic strip. <laughs> Um, so if you hide the post in the back room or a far corner, then your cat is less inclined to use the scratching post. So what you want to do in, um, 
is you want to bring the post and place it in front of the couch, as we previously discussed. Um, you can also have several posts in different areas of your home. These are your scent soakers, making them feel very secure, and they feel like they own the place. Types of scratching posts. So here you have a vertical, you have a horizontal, and you have um, one, I guess, just on an angle. So depending on how they're scratching, um, you'd want to place that scratching post um, wherever they are, whatever they're doing. So like the, the one on the angle, um, if there are scratches for the carpet, you can maybe place that one near the carpet and maybe use a carpet scratching post. Um, if they're if they're a cat that's going to scratch horizontally, um, so we'll say on top, they're getting on top of your couch and they're scratching on top of your your couch, then that means that there are horizontal scratchers and you need to get a, a scratching post that's um, horizontal. So now textures, um, there's sisal rope, cork, cardboard, or carpet. So you just want to match uh, whatever they like to the scratching post you choose. So now we're on to play aggression. So this involves a kitten or cat that stalks, claws, and bites your legs, hands, and arms. Um, this happens usually from the age of adolescence to two years old. So has this happened to you? You're playing or petting with your kitten. It seems all fun. And then all of a sudden, just out of the blue, your kitten's ears go back, growl, hisses and then lunges on your arms, kicking and biting. And then you're like, oh, look at this, all these scratches and bite marks I have. So this seems so inhibited, but your kitten is actually is doing what is natural to him or her, sharpening their hunting skills. These skills are in fact normal and natural prey. So reasons to why this happens. Um, so taking away from their mother or siblings too early, uh, humans that can cause play aggression, and humans that do not play with their kittens. So the first one is um, taking away from their mothers or siblings too early. So between the ages of four to 12 weeks, uh, the kitten's social play behavior begins. So you'll see them pouncing, sliding way, doing the sideways arch, um, chasing, leaping, or dancing. The kitten will repeat these behaviors over and over. Um, if you do have a kitten, I'm sure you've seen this before. When a kitten has gone too far with play, uh, they will nip, growl, or swat from their mom or siblings. And the mom or the litter mates will actually stop what they're doing and leave the kitten. Um, so they're ignoring the kitten who just played too rough. This basically just sends a message to the and teaches the kitten to ease up on the biting and scratching. So taking away too early from their mom and siblings, uh, these kittens are deprived of valuable lessons. Uh, kittens that were born feral and were not socialized with humans between this age can have a lack of socialization skills that can lead to aggression also. So human caused aggression. So humans can be a factor in this, where the human plays with their hands or feet because the kid is so cute and doesn't really hurt. But when they start to grow up, they think body parts are okay. So they continue doing that. And then time they hit adolescence, it's very, very painful. Um, humans don't play with their kittens. So humans that do not play with their kittens, um, kittens need to practice their hunting skills and should be done on appropriate toys. The more you can play with your kitten, the less trouble they'll get into, okay? Because you're gonna be burning all their energy onto this toy, okay? So what not to do? Um, yell, scream, flick, scruff, or hit. Um, this can make your this can make your kin fearful of you um, and have negative associations with you, and can also make the kin more aggressive. 
You also don't want to be picking up your kitten um, for a time out um, because this could be reinforcing the behavior. Um, a lot of times kittens or cats like to be picked up and held and you're just basically telling your kitten it's okay that you did this. Um, by the time you get um, her to the timeout room and close the door, she's probably already forgotten what she did um, to be put into the situation anyways. So prevention, how we prevent it. So there's a few things that you can do. Um, if your kitten's young enough, you can always adopt another uh, kitten uh, from your local shelter. Not only are they fun to watch, um, it will help with socialization and will keep each other busy too and um, probably will stop biting you. Uh, ignoring, um, what you want to do is you want to, instead of picking your cat up and bring it to time out, you actually want to stand up and just leave the room for a few minutes and let the, the kitten settle down. Neuter and spaying your cat is very important because an unneutered or unspayed cat, they can become territorial and become aggressive. Interactive play, um, know your cat's energy times and try to have a play session before they lash out on you. So get a routine of play times with them. Redirecting, um, so you're always gonna watch your cat's body language and know where your cat is. Um, when they are showing signs of stalking or staring at you, intently grab a toy or a crumpled piece of paper and throw it in the opposite direction. So now they're going to get redirected on this toy and no longer be focused on you. Uh, stop rough playing with your hands. Um, using any body part or overstimulating the cat. Um, instead, use toys and do not touch or pick up the cat when they are in an energetic mood. So if you've uh, had a kitten or a cat that's very energetic and it's running around or just uh, very awake and you go pick up the kitten or the cat, they will sometimes will turn around and bite you because you've just picked them up and they're on a mission doing, trying to do something else. So just make sure you never pick up your cat or your kitten when they're very energetic. And lastly is just to trim the nails, keep the nails um, short too, and um, that will also save your furniture too. So this is just a diagram. Um, I'll just go uh, through a few of them. It's a uh, cat's body language. So the first one is you can see the cat's relaxed, just kind of hanging out there, paws are to the side, um, ears are just you know forward or just relaxed. Um, your next one is your friendly one um, with the tail up. You know I don't know if you've seen a, your cat walking into the room, the tail up or greeting people. So they're just saying I'm being friendly, I'm being confident. Um, you'll have their little cat that's excited. So if you've ever come home from work and your cat runs over to the scratching post and is scratching the scratching post, they're very excited to see you. I'm very happy that you're home. Uh, the next one is trusting. So if you ever see your cat rolling around, showing their stomachs, um, that does not mean they want a belly rub because it's a misconception that people be always say, my cat rolls on his belly, I'm going to give him a belly rub. But a lot of times, there are some cats that actually do like that, but there are mo most of the cats do not like their belly rubs. Okay, so they're just saying, here's my belly, I'm exposed, I am trusting you, I have all the confidence and I love you. Um, attentive also is where a cat is just kind of sitting upright, paws are very, all the paws are very close together, and you'll see the tail wrapped right around the body, just very loosely, not too tight. Um, this is usually attentive, or sometimes it also means that I do not want to be touched, just kind of leave me alone, I'm kind of observing what's going on in the household. Uh, hunting, you've seen it when your cats are hunting um, a toy. Uh, they get very excited, wiggling their butts low to the ground. Um, irritated is a very important one to know because, um, especially if you have a cat that has petting-induced aggression or anything um, that's upsetting your cat, always watch for body language with the tail. Um, so the tail will may sometimes will just flick naturally, but if you see that tail going a lot more faster or the ears go back and then forth again, 
um, maybe the eyes will get dilated, uh, rippling of the skin, those are signs that your cat is becoming irritated and that is when you need to leave your cat alone before your cat engages in that bite. Um, you have your worried and frightened cat. Um, I'm sure, I don't know if anyone's seen that before, your cat is kind of cowering to the side, maybe under the bed, tail really wrapped and tucked underneath the belly, ears flattened, may not look at you, um, just, just very scared. You have your threatened cat. Um, I'm sure you may have seen it, hopefully you haven't, um, where your cat is hissing, growling, just very, very, very upset. So um, these are just some of the body languages um, that you should become familiar with your cat or if you're planning to get a cat um, that you can at least um, have a good communication and understand your cat a lot better. So signs of friendship. Um, so signs of friendship, you're going to see touching noses, uh, sleeping together um, with each other, greeting with tails up, playing together. And um, you'll also see them groom each other. So signs that they are not good friends. I just love this picture of the cat batting the kitten in the air. Um, so signs that they're not friends. Um, hissing or growling. Um, fur flying biting or scratching. You'll see one cat chase the other cat all the time and maybe that other cat, that victim cat will always end up, you know, going underneath the bed or or somewhere else. Um, but you always have that one cat chasing their cats. Um, and ears are usually fully rotated and pinned down. So cats playing can look rough. I get a lot of people asking me, are my cats actually fighting? So as long as they're not showing any of these signs, let them play even though it looks like even though it looks like fighting to you. It helps establish social ranking within the home. Um, so how to break up a cat fight. Stay calm. Cats will react more to one another if your energy is too intense. Um, use barriers between the cats. Um, so you can either use a pillow, um, throwing a blanket over one of the cats, or you can try to use a cardboard box in between them. Anything that you can kind of get in between them um, so they can't see each other anymore. Um, do not use your hands or pick up unless you know your cat and that you know your cat is non-reactive. Um, so for an example, my cat Chewy, if he is super upset about something or angry about something, I can just pick him up and he just melts on my arms and he's instantly calm. Um, where on the other hand, where Beanie, if I picked him up when he was very reactive, I'd probably be in the hospital antibiotics because I just need to keep my distance from him and give him his space. So just really know your cats. And if you have to react with cats, then make sure you use a barrier between them. Um, make a loud noise to distract them um, if you can't get to them um, in hopes that they will scurry away. So if they're underneath the bed or if, if they're in a corner, you just can't get them. Hopefully making a loud noise or clapping your hands or pans or something just to kind of get them away from each other. Um, if they do get in a fight, um, the best thing to do is to separate them, give them a little time out, calm down, and then always bring them back together at a safe distance um, and reward them with something. So the last thing that they remember is something positive and not negative, okay? Um, so I think that's it. So thank you for listening um, and happy Halloween, everybody. Um, I will now be taking any questions from the chat. Um, so hopefully I will um, hear from some of you. Yep, actually, we have quite a few questions uh, if you check the chat. Um, the first one that we have is, do you use a marker word to help the cat associate the position sit with the action if you don't have a clicker? Um, so, so yeah, so if you don't have a clicker, um, you can, you can just basically use your hands or if you have a cat that 
bites your hand, then you, you should use a spoon or something like that. So you don't necessarily need the clicker. You don't necessarily need to use it for training. You just basically, you can also use your hand. So when you get the cat luring into that sit position, you can then just give the treat right away as soon as it sits. You don't need to click and then give the, um, them the treat. Okay, great. Second question. Um, if you don't have a food made motivated cat and you mentioned that some are not, is there anything you can do to increase their interest in food so that it can help you with the training? Yeah, that's a good question because I know there's some cats out there that just are very, very picky. Um, some cats are really good with um, um, toys and um, you can try that. Um, but I think what you should, what you could do is just, ex you will probably have to experiment with different um, treats and foods out there. Um, so you can just try basically anything from using cooking chicken breasts and cutting that up into small pieces. You can use um, tuna from a can, salmon. You can use human food basically too if you can't find the right treat that they like. There's a lot of new treats out there on the market right now um, that um, cats are really finding um, edible. Um, I think there's one called churros, which a lot of clients of mine that said they have a picky cat and they went to that type of treat. Um, it's just kind of like yogurt and they just love it. So um, just kind of get out there, just grab a whole bunch of stuff and just see what's, what your cat likes. Awesome. Um, so at one point you mentioned that if cats are not getting along, uh, then you want to reintroduce them. So what exactly would be involved in doing that and what would the process be? Uh, so this is a long discussion, probably a topic for another day, but basically um, you need to separate them from each other. So you first, um, you would use no visual. And once there's no longer hissing or growling at that point, then you can move on to visual. Um, so at that time, you'll be working from, uh, you'll be using barriers like baby gates or screen, um, and you'll be working from a distance and gradually getting closer through positive reinforcements, um, maybe every day. Um, you can't rush this process because some cats can take days, weeks, or months. Okay. Um, how do you train a cat to tolerate an aversive activity such as tooth brushing, um, nail clipping, medications, etc.? Um, so with all those, um, so it's it would be great if your cat was food motivated. So for an example, for um, nail trimming. Um, you can go very slowly. Um, so what you want to do is over time, you want to start with petting your cats around where they really like to be petted and then come maybe down with their paw, go right back to where their head, where they really, really enjoyed being petted. Come back down, maybe, you know, um, um, pull out a nail, um, go back to their head and keep on doing that process so they kind of get used to you touching their, their paws, um, their nails, and you can always reinforce that with um, food. So you can pet their head, you can pet their, their feet, um, and always give them food. Um, sometimes if you have someone in the household with you, you can have that person hold um, a plate of canned food or have some treats, and while you're clipping a nail or two, they can be giving the cat um, their favorite treat or their favorite canned food. Um, the sense of cats with their paws, I'd probably just go to one nail at a, uh, maybe one nail at a time, stop, make it really fun for them, very positive, maybe come back to it later, try the second nail. And this process could take over three to five days, but if you make it really positive and really fun for them, then um, you know a few months later, you're gonna have a cat just sitting there and you can cut all their nails with no issue. So it is, it's a work in progress. Um, whereas the tooth brushing, I would always recommend um, putting something that's um, like an example, um, churros or some cat food on your finger and just kind of rub the gums of the cat. Um, and you may just do this for a second or two. 
And while you're doing that, the cat is getting their favorite treat. So the churros is like the yogurt or our cat food or tuna. And over time, you can increase um, the amount of time that you're doing this. And then once they get used to your finger on their gums, um, just make sure you wash your hands after, very important. Um, then you can introduce the little toothbrush and you just kind of do the same thing. You start slow, you just do one tooth at a time. You may stop, you may come back to it later. But the whole point of anything when you're training a cat is to make it very, very positive for them and have good associations with everything. Awesome. So um, if you, uh, in this case, advice needed for two cats who are nibblers and one cat who is a hoover who eats all the food. Um, the person was thinking of getting a microchip feeder, uh, even though they're very pricey. Would that be a good option for them, given that they have two cats that are uh, really excited about food? Sorry, one cat that is um, a hoover and the other two who are kind of nibblers. Uh Yes, definitely. If they're, if they want, if they're, um, yeah, because if one cat is a grazer and doesn't eat all the food, then you probably do want to get into um, getting a microchip feeder. So then the one cat can just go to it anytime they want where the other cat can't. Um, if you want the grazer cat to become on a time feeder so they can both eat at the same time, then you should just um, have, um, the nibbler, the grazer, so you would just put the, the food down, let them eat, pick it back up in 20 minutes, and then um, bring it back later in the day and then put it down. Um, and then at that point, that nibbler cat will soon start to be on a time feeding schedule. Um, but a microchip feeder is great. Um, it works really well um, in a multi-cat household. Great. Um, what is the proper way to play with a cat or a kitten? Uh, so a proper way to play. So you have to remember that a toy um, is, you have to pretend that it's the real prey. So a real pre prey is not going to be dangled from the cat. Um, it's going to be moving away from the cat. Um, so you have... Um, so what you want to do, and I'm just going to say one of my favorite toys out there, which I just love, and I'm sure a lot of people have this at home, is called um, the DeBird. They also have other products called the Mouse, Bumblebee, Rat. They're interchangeable toys. I like these wand toys, especially when cats have play aggression, because they're very, very long, and it's, you can stay distance from them, so they're no longer focused on your hands, and they're only focused on the toy. Um, so how to properly play with a toy is um, you want to move away from the cat. So you're just going to move this one toy away from the cat. So you may be going behind the couch, underneath the blanket, up the couch, or up the couch, or whatever they're allowed to be on. And you're going to move this toy in a slow motion, trying to get their attention. And the cat's going to be wiggling its butt and slowly creeping towards this toy. And then all of a sudden when he gets to the to the toy then you want to kind of like swing it in the air and fly it all over the place so now he's doing cardio or she's doing cardio so you want to do about three reps of this especially if they're very high energetic and they're young so you want to so the first rep would be a little bit of that play, play sequence play sequence and then do some cardio where they're running around they're really tired they're going to stop they're going to look like they're breathing heavy and then you pick it up again. So then you're gonna play and do the same thing. You're gonna make it um, like a hunting, a prey sequence, um, wiggling the butt, grabbing it. And sometimes you can let them grab and walk off with it, that's fine. But then pick it up again and do a cardio session and then do a third rep the same way. Always end your cardio sessions and your play sessions um, with a prey sequence where they can actually wiggle their butt, jump on it, maybe carry it off with their mouth. When you're done playing, give them a treat or a food that tells them that you're done playing with them and that they're also getting that satisfaction of i was playing i caught the thing i am now eating what i caught and now i'm very content and i'm going to leave you alone great suggestion um if a kitten or cat nips at feet when he wants food how do you manage this behavior and what actually causes it um, <clears throat> so usually that means the cat is being demanding for any reason, um, if they're nipping for food. So what you want to do 
is you want to ignore the cat, no eye contact, no speaking, um, just leave the room. The cat will follow you because now they're thinking, hey, what's going on? You just left the room. Um, and then once you've left the room and he's followed you, you'll want to wait two to three seconds as long as he or she is showing the correct behavior, of just kind of sitting there and just being calmly. And then you'll praise them and reward them. This is the same thing for two. If, um, you know, if you're sitting and your cat is knocking things off the shelf, um, that's more of its attention seeking. And you'll do the same thing for that, too. You'll ignore them. You won't speak to them. You won't say anything to them. You'll just get up, leave the room. The cat will be now, hey, where are you going? Why aren't you giving me my food or, or why aren't you paying attention to me? Um, and then you'll leave the room. They'll follow you guaranteed and they'll just sit there and kind of look at you be, and be like, why did you leave? And that that point, you can then reward them for that correct behavior, just sitting there and, and sitting calmly. Great. Well. Thank you, Claudette, um, for your wonderful pr presentation. This was just awesome. I, I think we got some insights into how to begin maybe um, doing a little training with our cat. Certainly, we got a lot of insights into preventative measures for potential problems that we might have and uh, a way to look at some of these behavioral problems to not only identify whether they're medical or behavioral, but also what our next steps might be in terms of modifying them. So um, I think some of us are going to head off and, and do some playing with our cats for sure and absolutely we're going to sort of work on finding those special treats that will enable us to teach our cat at the very least to sit because that seems like a useful uh, activity to be able to do and engage with our with our cats so um, thank you so much for everything and thank you for uh, helping us to do what we love to do here at the Oakville Milton Humane Society and that is sharing information about the animals which are so much a part of our lives and improving the relationships between us and them and um, I hope everyone will have a wonderful evening and that you will join us for future seminars so good night stay safe and hopefully we'll see you next time bye from us at the Oakville and Milton Humane Society <laughs>